Now, first of all, welcome. I see that uh, this audience is quite critical, which I welcome. A critical audience is always very m motivating for our panel lists here today. So once again, a very warm welcome to all of you to this section of our convention here today. Now, some of you will remember that last year at ITB, we talked about communication and sales strategies for sustainable products. And now you might wonder, why are we regurgitate, regurgitating that again? It's 12 months down the line. And uh, quite a lot has changed, I think, uh, in those past 12 months when it comes to green travel transformation. Green travel transformation is not only an objective, it indeed is the name of a research project funded by um, the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. Now, what we'd like to do today is to drill a little deeper. What has happened in this past year and what does it really mean for our industry in terms of uh, sales and sustainable products? Now, let me welcome the project manager of that product or of that project first. And that's Professor Edgar Kralkamp from the Lufana University of Lüneburg. Oh, welcome, Mr. Kralkamp. You're going to say a word or two about this project, uh, and then uh, we will uh, discuss that a little further, not only with you, but a number of panelists. Yeah, thank you, Matthias. Good afternoon, everyone. What I'd like to do in just a few uh, mi minutes, really, is to give you a rough overview of our project because we want to leave ample time for our discussion here today. Now, throughout uh, this presentation, you'll realize that a lot of information can also be found on the internet, and I'm going to refer to that also. Now, what we wanted to do is to uh, boost the share of sustainable travel generally. So that's the proposition. In other words, in terms of the total amount of travel products available in the market, we want to boost sustainable products. But what that also means that uh, we need to uh, raise awareness uh, um, in the travel operator and the tour operator and travel agency community, people need to be aware of sustainable products to market to their customers. And customers should really have uh, plenty of information if they're interested in those sustainable travels. And you know these studies. When you ask people, do you want to travel sustainably, then obviously everyone says, yes, I really want to do that. Um, this is in market research, is uh, called social desirability. It's the desire of people. It's not uh, reality. If you compare desirability to reality, you see the figures look quite different. But there's still a group, about 7%, that really uh, want sustainable travel a lot. And then there's also a group that is growing that at least uh, takes sustainability into account alongside price and attractiveness, etc. But sustainability does play a certain role. Now, we did a comprehensive research on that. Uh, 2,000 people were surveyed in Germany. Uh, if you use follow this link you see there on the slide, you can see the overall findings on the web there as well. Now, two aspects are important. When we ask people, the general public, and in fact, it was also true for uh, opinion service that we do in travel agencies, is that there's stereotypes, preconceived notions. People think sustainable holiday travel means uh, doing without something. I don't know what, but people feel there's a lack of something if you do something sustainably. This is still a mindset of people. And also, it's a mindset of people to say sustainable travel is, in, is expensive, more expensive than traditional. Well, we checked on that, and it's not necessarily true. And normally, sustainable trips are not more expensive than traditional ones. And it would be hard to understand why a hotel that saves on energy and uh, water should be expensive. Well, it should be the other way around. Obviously, you can take, think about investments, etc., which will cause a higher retail price. So, yes, we need to educate people and to instill in their minds that things are no longer what they thought they would be. Now, that could be solved, you are saying, by introducing a certification label. Well, more of 50% of respondents are saying we don't need labels. There's only 15% who are saying, now, I'd like to have a, sale, a, a label. And about 33% of respondents are saying, I only care about the hotel if it's, a, if it's certified um, uh, and what certification I don't care about. If there's a label there, it's OK. Whether it's good or not, I don't care. So there must be authenticity in it. But we have to change labels, that's what some people say, because you want to understand how sustainable hotels are. 
and how uh, they refer to a credible certification system. And these certification systems must be part of our reservation systems of the OTAs as well. Only then can we train people. And you have to communicate. You can communicate certification labels through catalogs, through a number of listings, databases, etc. Now, currently, we're just testing. But uh, we have uh, moved into almost 5,000 travel agencies. Uh, uh, we are working with the market leaders in the OTAs uh, and generally also the booking systems. What does that mean? If you have a sustainable certification label of a given hotel, it'll be showing in the reservation systems with a green leaf. That green leaf is a symbol. Now, all that means it's not qualifying the accreditation system or the certification system, all it says is there is a label in place, full stop. And that's an important step, mind you. Over and beyond that, and this is what our project is based on, and the, there's what we call the Green Travel Index. The Green Travel Index is a data repository for all of that information. It's an interface for other systems, and in the future, it will also include information that goes beyond just the existence of a label. So it will add more information. So that's number one. Number two, awareness raising and education. There's the green counter of the German uh, Travel Association. Now, this green counter has been completely revamped. The first couple of uh, slides you see there on the screen, it also includes uh, training components, uh, drawing on a number of aspects uh, contained in that green counter. Basically, it's an e-learning system that we make available across the board, also to travel agencies. Now, what else have we developed? We've uh, developed a face-to-face -face training course. It's a two-day training course. And those who attend two courses will receive a DRV, which is a German Travel Association certificate. They can call themselves a consultant for sustainable travel if they have taken these courses. And something that uh, we're very uh, upbeat about is that our labels and uh, certifications are also included in the Thomas Cook catalog. On the right there, you see a very comprehensive description of what sustainable travel means, and you also see uh, green leaf symbolism of certified travel. And it explains why we're doing that, and it's used throughout the travel catalog as a distinguishing feature. And more will follow. We'll talk about that in a moment. No, I'm just uh, telling you that this is uh, a test project at the moment, a pilot, but already what has come to the fore that um, some of these figures obviously will still change, but these figures are in line with people's expectations because not all customers are interested of, uh, in sustainability, so not all travel uh, consultants will mention it in the interview or in the, in, in the interaction with uh, uh, clients, but already 11% of people do it already, of travel consultants, and uh, I think uh, this is actually the reality. I mean, you wouldn't bombard every customer coming to your desk, to your desk with uh, sustainability, but when you realize they have an interest, then you certainly do. At the end of the day, what that means is that, and I'm um, wrapping up here, we must instill that mindset in uh, in travel agencies, uh, telling them, look, there's an added benefit in offering those services. We make it visible, we attach uh, a label to it, and this allows people to find sustainable travel products. While at the same time, people know this is not just any communal garden label, it's verified, it's credible, it's authentic, and um, they have to correspond to the TSTC criteria for those of you who know the tricks. Now, of course, we have to uh, share more information, disseminate that information. We do training courses, as I said before, and all of these are aspects that uh, we have uh, found to be really that we have found to be really important for travel agencies. So, yes, the travel agencies have been waiting for something like that. Not all of them, obviously, but I think um, you know my personal expectations uh, have certainly been uh, surpassed. I'm, I'm amazed to see how many people have really uh, enjoyed using that new accreditation system. Now, how, where do we go uh, from here? We're going to roll out uh, that information gathering campaign, and I'll be happy to talk about that with my panelists in a moment, because it's going beyond, obviously, the hotel industry.
Thank you very much, Mr. Krakam, for these very interesting introductory slides there. And I think there's plenty of food for thought here. So may I now ask our panelists here to join me on stage and we can get started in just a few moments. So please. Yeah. Now, first of all, welcome to all of you. Great. Uh, you found the time to be here today to discuss this really compelling topic, and I must say that. And let me introduce our panelists here, Mr. Kranke, and before you met. Uh, once again, uh, uh, welcome to you. Then we have Norbert Fiebig, uh, head of the German Travel Association, the patron of food tourists. Uh, then we have Mr. Alexander Breitkreutz, the managing director of the DR Travel Agency Divisions, and he's the vice president for IT at the DR Deutsche Reiseborough chain. Next to him, Friederike Grupp, uh, the sustainable consultant of Thomas Cook in Germany, and she's also a member of the executive board of Futurist. And to the very right, uh, Professor Harold Zeiss, a Professor for Sustainable, Sustainable Tourism at the Harz University of Applied Sciences, and he's also the Chairman of Futuris. So five uh, high-caliber uh, panelists here. Very little time. So may I ask you to be very brief in your answers. Uh, let's get started with Mr. Fiebig. First of all, let's address the topic uh, at a broader scale. We've heard from Mr. Krikam, 54% of Germans say they would be happy to go for a sustainable uh, for sustainable travel. So there's the will of the customer. What about the political will of the travel industry? Are they ready? What's the relevance of sustainability for the tourism industry as we speak? That's my feeling that the travel industry is a much more powerful driver than the customers are. Why? Because the travel industry has been driven also by the NGOs in this world. Um, NGOs uh, have pointed out that there are deficiency out there, that the industry has to respond. So I think it's a reverse chain. Customers don't approach their travel agency saying, I really want a sustainable trip. It's uh, actually quite the other way around. Tour operators uh, act on their own accord. If not on their own accord, they feel the pressure of society and of civil society, and therefore they're making those suggestions, those, pro those proposals up front. Uh, and it's very much in line with what uh, tour operators also do or need to do in the future, because they are responsible players. The value, the intrinsic value and the attractiveness of a destination is how we are selling that product. Uh, the way we are selling it, and if this is in any way uh, threatened by negative influences, nature conservation, social responsibility are just cases in point, then the attractiveness of the product will be gone. In other words, these are all closely intertwined. The actual driver is uh, the travel industry itself, while well, the travel industry in turn is also being driven by the general mega trends. What do we need to do? Well, we want to bring the customer uh, into that process as well. They need to think about uh, very, very openly or open-mindedly. It's going to be easier in the future, I'm sure, and the, the uh, numbers testify to that. And now we have those new instruments, and it makes it much easier for us. So once again, in a nutshell, there's a great commitment um, of uh, the travel industry to uh, embark on that new journey. It's not only about nature conservation, it's about social responsibility that comes in different forms of manifestation, if I may say so. Okay, so the travel industry is a driver of sustainability. That's, um, that's what you're saying. Now, following the results uh, of the Green Travel Transformation Project, as shown by Mr. Kralkamp, uh, where do you see the role of the tourism industry? Is the Green Travel Transformation the main momentum to make the travel industry more sustainable? Is there a question for me? It is. Okay. Well, we have to be the drivers, of course, because just Take the cruise industry as a driver. Oh, sorry, as an example. Um, now the NABU, which is one uh, uh, pressure group in Germany, says that cruise ship emissions should be reduced, or at least should be less toxic. 
Now, what did the cruise industry do? They uh, were taking that on board. Look at the new ships that are being built today. They're much more environmental compatible that, uh, than the ships you saw 10 or 20 years ago off the shipyards. Our customers, to be quite honest, uh, won't take a yes and no decision. They're not going to look at the emissions quality of uh, diesel engines on the ship. It's the other way around. It's the industry building cleaner ships and obviously advertising them. But this is not coming from the customer. That's coming from industry. And I don't think this is going to change. It doesn't really matter if, it's, uh, if, if that is changing or not. We need one driver. And the driver is more the industry. It's not so much the customer, I think. OK, well, let's talk about the industry then. We have two practitioners here from the field. Green Travel Transformation says we want to make a sustainable travel products um, transparent. They should be found by the consumers. Um, Ms. Krupp, can we start with you? Thomas Cook, as we've just heard, has come up with a standard uh, certification label of hotels in your catalogs. Now, what does that mean? In all of your Thomas Cook catalogs, can customers see at a glance your hotels, the sustainable hotels? And what's your customer feedback, if any? Well, the logo has been shown a moment ago in that slide by Mr. Krellkamp. Now, in our catalogs, we have introduced some introductory text uh, saying that uh, of all of our summer 2018 catalogs, uh, Thomas Kajk, uh, Neckermann, and Ogertours now use uh, the symbolism. And the logo is then also uh, shown on the certified hotel pages that we're showing. In other words, it's very open. It's very transparent to the customers. And we're actually following uh, what our customers want. Um, we had a Thomas Cook holiday report commissioned in 2017, which included also a customer survey. We asked our customers, how important is sustainability, sustainability for you on holidays? Um, and 49% uh, said it's important, and 16.5% said it's very important. In other words, two out of three say sustainability is important. And then we asked the question, how do you organize a sustainable tra travel? And then 24% said, well, we're organizing it if we have a standard certification uh, label for sustainable travel for us. The logical corollary was, well, let's put such a certification label into our catalogs to help our customers. Now, we have very little time now here to uh, take stock because it's a brand new uh, decision to be that we took. But it takes more time until um, you know more people realize that this is what we offer now. But the uh, feedback we've received uh, hitherto was very good, as you've seen in that earlier slide. Very positive feedback. OK, let me say that again. Uh, we have to distinguish between uh, the certification label uh, and the certification system. No, it's not a new label. It is, uh, it is a symbolism that refers to certified hotels that already, maybe years ago, have received their label certification already. So uh, Thomas Cook has done some good work on that, and other players have uh, followed suit. And now you're using in your uh, travel systems or reservation systems also this uh, uh, certification uh, marker. Now, does that mean you have moved mainstream now with the uh, sustainable labels? Have you had any uh, feedback uh, of your uh, staff when they use um, this, uh, this marker, the certification label reference in your catalogs? So is there anything you can share with us? Some good feedback, not from the customer, but from your staff, travel agency staff. Well, it's available also for DR tourism. Uh, the larger part of our travel agencies can uh, use now the new certification labels. There's about 2,000 travel agencies, by the way. And uh, the feedback we got from our travel agency staff was very positive. They say, this is a very important USP. It's a good argument uh, to reason our case if the customers are interested, of course. As Mr. Fibish has, says, has said, uh, we are driving change here. And that's very important. It's our industry. For the customer, at the end of the day, it's a one out of many decision criteria. They are you know, saying, I want to go uh, on travel only if the hotel, hotel is sustainable. It's not true. But if they have a choice of several hotels to compare, then sustainability is one of many decision criteria. And they, it may tip the scales in many cases. But what we want to do is we want to see a situation where more and more hoteliers are voluntarily getting their certification labels. Um, and this is also the responsibility, obviously, of the hospitality industry, no doubt. Now, then we looked at the overall development 
of uh, the hotel landscape? Uh, are they performing uh, worse or uh, better? Have they increased their bookings after certification, yes or no? Well, uh, with all due respect, this is a very short, uh, short period of time once the systems had uh, really come into place and uh, bookings, uh, bookings uh, have not really uh, dynamically developed uh, after certification. What does that mean? Well, it means we need more communication, more awareness raising. Customers should be told that there's a new product out there in order to boost booking numbers. But our staff realizes this is a very good argument to uh, offer a good product to the customer because we say, look, this is a certified uh, hotel. But I think more needs to be done in terms of communications. Okay, so it's fair to say. You have uh, certification both in the catalogs and in the booking systems. These are two sides of the same coin. Now, either side of the coin uh, is already being used in DER or in Thomas Cook. What about uh, the other side of the equation? Ms. Krupp, you earlier said you already have that label in your catalogs. What about the GDS systems or the reservation systems? Will that happen there soon as well? Well, we hope. It's our objective to include that label also into the, um, the reservation systems of travel agencies. The feedback um, of uh, the travel consultants that are also using those catalogs are telling us, uh, yes, put it into the booking systems as well. So yes, this is uh, our objective. We're currently negotiating with our partners how to get it done quickly. Well, the question to you as well. When can we expect the label to be shown in the catalogs? Well, uh, we didn't talk about that before, or didn't agree. You know, we're doing one and, the, uh, and, and uh, you're doing the other. No, it's not true. It depends on how quickly can you bring about change and how, uh, how quick we can leverage that uh, influence, of course. But it depends uh, on also our own uh, property landscape and what we can do uh, with our own hotels. We're just in the process of certifying more and more hotels. This is on the agenda for the rest of the year. But that, you know, is a dynamic process. We are sharing this work, burden sharing. We are playing the ball into each other's court, if you will, and then uh, make sure that we all make progress together in sync. Green travel transformation is a project that will be finalized uh, soon. But that was only a pilot, and I think that process needs to continue. The actual success of the project uh, does not depend on one of results. The question is, what should we do from here, over and beyond that? If this is going to be mainstreamed, what do we do, Professor Zeiss? You are a chairman of Futuris. What can your association do? in order to uh, you know, roll it out uh, across the board rather than keeping it a uh, uh, one-hit wonder. OK, now we, for Taurus, are an association of the tourism industry sustainability agenda. And uh, we want to pool our resources to make, uh, bring about change that individuals probably could not. In a, well, in a way, we are a catalyst of uh, a number of positive uh, best practices and uh, hopefully also link one to the other. We're very proud that uh, with, uh, with under the auspices of the German Travel Association, we have brought a number of um, stakeholders on board, the Green Counter, as shown before, has been completely revamped. There's also now a certification for travel agency workers as well. I think the German Travel Association is the go-to association to do that. For tourists, we'll address new agenda items because we would like to bring about change, get change on the road, literally, whether it's uh, uh, waste avoidance, um, efficiency programs. Uh, we are, if you will, the ones that provide the incentives or the impetus, and then the whole project needs to fly. And uh, it has worked really well, the work we've done so far, I think. Let me drill a little deeper and ask you questions uh, about what you have worked on in this project. We heard about uh, the single labeling system of uh, sustainability uh, accredited hotels. They're now in the booking machines. They'll be shown in the future, will be shown in the printed catalogs. But Mr. Crykamp also talked about the green counter. The green counter is not new. It has been in existence for a couple of years, but it has just been, as we heard, uh, probably not renewed, but it had been improved, revamped, extended in terms of functionalities. Now, Mr. Phoebe, what's your experience with the green counter? Is it being used? Is it popular? And what's new? What sets it apart from the original functionalities So, for the travel consultants? 
yes, it was uh, going down well. But uh, um, the capabilities of that green counter um, had a lot of potential to, for improvement. But what has changed is the outlook. Initially, we thought when we train our staff, uh, uh, we need to prepare them for a scenario when your client walks into your travel agency and says, I'd like to buy a sustainable trip. Well, that doesn't exist as a trip. But if you have someone who walks in and says, I want to go to Mallorca or Thailand, then, and this is what we do in the training course, the travel consultant should be knowing what to offer. The training puts people focus on uh, sustainability issues in the conventional, if you will, or in the traditional way that you talk to your customer. And maybe it trigger sustainability in the mind of the customer. That's important. And in order for that whole project to fly, I mean, the, the marketing, the marketing and the distribution of sustainable hotels, that would require that you do not only do what the conventional do-gooders would do, right? Avoidance of waste, minimizing carbon emissions, etc. This is not measurable. That's not tangible. And that's not really a great experience to be had on your holiday. You may feel better if you're avoiding waste or if you reduce your emissions. But that's not a great experience, is it? But let's approach that different. Let's say social responsibility. That is an aspect that people will feel, will see, will discern. If they stay at a responsible hotel, at a sustainable hotel, where they see with their own eyes that people are uh, engaging with their staff better, when they are committed, uh, when they are, you know, they feel these are service people that are happier, that are nicer that uh, feel at home, feel welcome in that hotel, rather than a situation or a country when uh, there's a lot of social pressure. Still, it may be corresponding to, to average country standard, but uh, it doesn't create that nice experience. So what am I saying? And this is only one example. What I'm saying is that we have to teach in many ways to tell our customers it's not only about doing good things. We are offering something that for you makes a hell of a difference, which is a measurable difference. And if you manage to do that, then this is a very important USP for us. This uh, also has to be made very clear also in the different properties and our products uh, that we offer. Sustainability today is not only about uh, waste avoidance or CO2 re uh, reductions, but it is a very hard fact. It's measurable. It's uh, enjoyable. It's a new product. And then I think our customers will accept it much more. And that is going to be a no-brainer for all of us. We can see this in the food industry. We've got the yogurt boxes where you can have a look at all the ingredients. But it's not very sexy if I can put it like this. And I suppose nobody will read it. Uh, we need more transparency, I suppose. Would that be the approach? You said uh, it needs to be measured. It has to be more transparent as far as uh, CO2 footprint is concerned. Maybe we could uh, include this, I don't know, in the catalog or online. We could publish it there. Or how can I uh, imagine it? No, I was focusing on something else, CO2 emissions. This is something that you can express in figures as well, of course. But as far as customers who are aware of this, uh, they might be interested in this. One third less CO2 emissions compared to another hotel, for instance. I do not believe that, just generally speaking, this will be too relevant. Regarding uh, the whole volume, it is important for what it means for me, for my holiday experience, for the quality of the hotel. Do I, do I see a difference? Do I like it or not? whether we measure CO2 emissions or not. Well, you can do it, of course, and maybe it's part of everything uh, of the whole project, but this is not the point I would like to make. We are too academic in terms. We need to have a more emotional approach. That is, we need to um, address customers in their feelings and emotions and tell them what the differences are. If you've got a figure of uh, CO2 emissions of 3.4 or 4 or whatever, you will not really win over customers like this or co convince them to do certain things. This is rather uh, important for academic completeness, I suppose, but this is not the aspect I was mentioning. I wanted to talk about the, about the emotional side and the um, necessity of uh, highlighting customer advantages. 
additional benefits. Mr. Fubi said people do not want to go to travel agencies only to book a trip. You said you need to have an emotional approach for customers. Now, regarding your project, you also um, set up training programs, in other words, to think about how can you make sure that travel agency experience are able to emotionally express uh, sustainability uh, in such a way that it is tailored to the customers. Maybe you can uh, you can elaborate on this. What is to be found behind this program? What do you expect? Well, first of all, I think it has become quite clear that there are various aspects which are dovetailed into one another. So Mr. Fibo is, is absolutely right. One difficulty consists in the fact that the own benefit is not really very visible. We also realized that the hotels hardly communicate this. If you go to a hotel uh, which does a lot of sustainability things, then they don't communicate it. They need to communicate it in-house, first of all. They need to say that they've got regional food, etc., all these things. Then the expedient in the travel agency has the possibility to be able to clearly talk about the actual advantage. By using arguments such as saying, well, the hotels take uh, into account nature, they've got good working conditions for their staff, etc. This is a bit too abstract for people. This is why we've got the Green Travel Index project. And the next phase that we would like to enter into, and we're being prepared, we're preparing this, Stefan pushing, pushes the project in the US as well. So the next phase would be to give more specific information and especially to get specific information of the hotel so that we can say this and that hotel, they um, do this and that project, uh, they uh, take care of local institutions, uh, cultural institutions, or they support the local agriculture with their purchases of food, etc. The more specific we can be, and to this end we need to gather information, we can forward this information to the travel agencies, and then the expedients have better arguments at their hands. For instance, we've got this green counter training. Uh, we also had sales uh, pitches. How do we talk to the customers? What kind of arguments can you use? But the, these types of pitches are better the more specific you can be. If you're only at a very abstract level in your terminology, it's very difficult to convey any emotional messages. You need to get s some more insights So, as to do these things. You need to. Uh, also uh, go beyond this. You need hotel information. They can also use this for their marketing purposes. They can talk about their individual projects. And then the uh, travel agencies would be a huge opportunity for them. Because currently we can see that there are still some obstacles, uh, I would like to call it kind of friction, when having uh, these talks with customers, uh, then uh, we need to think about what we can do. So I'm not surprised that turnover is not increasing regarding the hotels, because the staff don't even know about it. They haven't even started the training. They need to get this information. They need to know what journey they are supposed to embark upon. And I think this is a long-term process. When thinking about the catalogues as well, I always discuss this. It is important to have fast communication with the organizers, but uh, it's important to make sure that customers are not too confused. They simply need to know, OK, this is the way it is. Well. It is all very complex. Yes, it's a process. And let me talk about the two guests uh, who've got their hands-on experience. Let's take a look at the food industry now. We've got the organic markets, and um, uh, it's uh, possible without any training. Uh, where's the difference? Why is it so complex in the tourist industry compared to the food industry, for instance? The question to the two of you. I think it's a content issue as well. We talk about this in distribution. There are the classical issues that are raised, such as I need a hotel which is vegan, for instance. Um, and this uh, results in less CO2 emissions because animal husbandry is not necessary. Uh, so uh, it's important that customer knows about the content of the hotels. And it must be visible in the systems. And it must be maintained as well, as you said. Because if, for instance, I've got a customer who's interested in organic supermarkets um, and doesn't want to buy any conventional food any longer. I do this, for instance, and they don't get this thing during the holidays. They don't give any information whether they've got regional product, 
products, or at least, or organic products. This is something that we need to tackle together, uh, and it needs to be visible at the counters, in the websites, etc., so that the hotels can present themselves like this. To a certain extent, they can thus meet these customers' requirements and they can say, OK, I can offer this or that hotel to you, not only because it is certified, but also because uh, the products they use are regional and, uh, well, I think this would also be very helpful. Because um, it happens that customers don't get the information they'd like to have and this is a task we should uh, tackle together. Would you like uh, to add on to this? Yes, I agree with this. Uh, it's a question of supply and demand. If we offer this to customers, they will also demand it further. They can see it in supermarkets. It uh, took quite some time until the organic products uh, were more visible at the higher shelves. Tourism maybe was lagging behind a little bit, but we'll definitely manage to catch up there. And well, we already uh, mentioned the survey that we carried out. Customers said that they wanted more information. 34% of customers wanted to get more information. So I think it's not really a big issue uh, that we still need to gather information and prepare ourselves. Maybe other sectors um, had less obstacles. They um, were the pioneers. And we can be glad that these are the, this type of information is required in tourism as well. It's a process. And I think we should cooperate so as to achieve these targets. As I said, it is a process. Now, we described the current situation. We should also discuss uh, the future. Professor Seiss, I'd like to ask you, not as a CEO, but as a professor, from an academic perspective, what would you say, what are the next logical steps in this process so as to further promote this entire process? Well, to be honest, holidays do not only consist of your stay in the hotel. You need to wonder how you can make the entire customer journey transparent in such a way that regarding every single part of the trip, it is possible for the customers to get information on sustainability. Uh, this includes uh, the uh, trip to the airport, the flight, uh, the accommodation in the hotel. Uh, you have to, add, have to add trips. But um, it is difficult because the topic is very complex. Um, to put it in a very roundabout way, this holiday trip is not a fridge where you can have the A to E categories, for instance, and you can clearly define what is environmentally sen um, environmentally friendly. And um, this is not only linked to ecological factors, but also social factors. So you can say what is better, to save water or to have a fair remuneration, fair wages. If you do one thing, maybe the other thing is not possible, also in terms of these categories. And um, well, I've uh, been wondering for many years how you can uh, display this system in a very simple way, but on the other hand, that you don't only give rough estimates uh, so as to see whether something is sustainable or not. My personal impression is that we also need to involve customers and possibly media as well. That is, the more informed customers we've got, who are familiar with abstract issues such as CO2, etc., and who then uh, can be reached by our communication better because they've got a certain insight and knowledge already, the easier it will be to cut down on complexity. Let us talk about food again. Ten years ago, I suppose not everybody uh, knew about all the specific ingredients of um, yogurts, free-range eggs, etc. Now consumers know about this. They know what all this is about. And they know that the brown eggs are better than the white eggs, for instance. So if we've got customers who can uh, make decisions based on informed consent, uh, then they also know that uh, when taking the train to go to the airport, this is more environmentally friendly than taking the car. So this would, have, uh, would mean quite some progress. And to summarize it once again, we've got the hotels. 
Then regarding flights, you can in any case use atmosphere, but we also need the other components so as to make the customer journey transparent. And there are also positive uh, examples to reduce poverty, social economic benefits. This is where um, tourism can do a lot. We mustn't only complain and uh, talk about uh, consumption of water, CO2 emissions. I think tourism can um, convey a lot of positive messages, but this needs to be transparent as well, so as to have some kind of equality and balance. Uh, well, regarding our panel, we do not have that much time left, but one last question. Uh, you worked in this research project for three years. Maybe you can uh, summarize the individual faces for us. Was there anything that was surprising to you, what you might not have expected? Uh, well. Let me bring it to a head. There is one aspect. It worked better than expected because you also need to convince people. You need to involve everybody. You need to um, clarify technical feasibility, hold talks, more talks, really involve everybody. I think as far as the period of time we had, um, we've uh, achieved a lot. But of course, um, this is not the end. This has, has become clear as well. There are more than two, two tour operators. We would like to also bring the others on board. Maybe they are not as relevant, but uh, we like to uh, give our project partners uh, advantage as well. But actually, we agree we need to roll this out better. We need to communicate even better to the travel agencies. We uh, need better communication for the customers. And uh, what Mr. Hi Harald Sai said is absolutely right. We need to think about what we do with flights, um, uh, package tools. What about uh, trips? I think. You can uh, fulfill a lot more tasks because <coughs> you mentioned transparency, which is very difficult in tourism. Because we've got so many hotels, we've got so many different types of holidays. Um, well, finally, it boils down to communication at, with customers because um, uh, we need to communicate this to customers again and again so that customers uh, think about it. Then they realize actually it's possible because we do have quite some customers who say, I'd like to do this and that, but I can't find any solutions. We'd like to stop this and say, this is just an excuse we can't accept any longer. So um, I think uh, for me, and regarding all the project partners, I think we can say that we've got a beautiful project, but uh, we all uh, agree that we need to do more. Okay, I think this is a nice closing remark. Thank you very much to all the panelists. Just very briefly before we close the discussion, I would like to um, ask the audience once again to provide their opinion. You were rather critical in the answers regarding the first question. Now we've got another question for you. And we're going to reflect what we've just discussed. The question is the following one. Which statement do you agree with the most? Number one, bookings for sustainable travel will increase notice, notice, sorry, noticeably in the coming years. Number two, travel agencies will focus more on sustainability in the future. Or else? Option number three, travel agents are not likely to offer sustainable travel deals. Or else you might choose option number four, I do not expect any significant changes. Now I'd like to ask you to vote now. Please choose one of the four possible answers. Would any panelist like to dare say what uh, answer might get the most votes? Two, three? No three? That's very clear. Half of the people in the audience think 
that travel agencies will uh, focus more on sustainability in the future and communicate more on this. I think this is the objective to be achieved. So I think we uh, can be quite optimistic at the end of this panel discussion. We've learned a lot. Uh, we've got a lot of food to take home. It is a process, and we have clearly stated that the topic of uh, sustainability is up to us. We must make our contributions. It's not only about supply and demand. We need to be the pioneers. We talked about the next steps. And to conclude, I think we can say it's not about green travel transformation only, but this also includes the social aspects. I remember last year I had the honor to host a, a panel. There were only gentlemen, and you can see a little bit has changed here this year, so we can definitely improve things further. But I think we're on the right track, and here again, I can say I hope that we've made some progress. So on that note, I would like to cordially thank our panelists for their contributions. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank uh, you for your attention. Thank you for voting as well. I hope you're going to enjoy the rest of your day here at the ITB. And I would like to thank you once again. Goodbye.